Good morning guys. It is finally that time of year to put my shade cloth up and Chase and I have spent the last two days doing that across the entire garden and I'm going to be talking to you today about whether or not you need a shade cloth in a hot environment, what type of shade cloth to use, and everything about mine. Let's go. My shade cloth structure spans my entire garden, both my raised bed and in-ground garden. It's about 50 feet long. Um, that's a mistake I made in ordering my last shade cloth, which we'll talk about in a second. But the entire span of these two separate shade cloths is 50 feet long, with my structure being around 55. Now for those of you that are new here, my name is Megan and I live in zone 8A in an arid desert environment in southwest USA. And my shade cloth structure runs north to south and as you can see it doesn't cover my entire garden. And I'm going to be expanding the garden to the east in the future anyways. I'm not planning on building any more of this structure. It's not cheap to put up and neither is the shade cloth itself. Those ordered custom for you are actually quite expensive. <laughs> So Chase and I had originally tried to build this with just some 4x4s in the ground and draping a shade cloth over it. But cheap is the operative word and it quickly fell apart and I realized that in our high wind area we needed something far more sturdy that would hold up in the wind and the elements. So this structure was born. Now with the sun rising to the east over here, the whole garden does get morning light and then for most of the day these three rows that I have in my raised bed garden get covered from the brunt of the sun for most of the day until it sets over here in the west and then all of the plants get the afternoon sun not to the greatest extent so it's probably the hot hottest part of the day they are still covered but in the evening they'll all get sun from the setting sun and it's not too much hotter after that they'll be fine i do have this rock wall here to also block the sun in the evenings. But for the better part of the day, everything here is covered and shaded with a 40% shade cloth. So the main question is, does everyone need a shade cloth? And the answer is absolutely not. I live in one of the hottest and most arid deserts in the United States, the Chihuahuan Desert. But our highs here in the summer can get upwards of 100 degrees and it's a very, very dry heat. Now there are plant varieties that you can grow that do just fine in the heat, like okra, this lovely herb called yarrow, certain varieties of squash and corn, and just plants that are native to this type of environment. But there are also plants that I like to grow that do not do well in 100 degree heat. Not many plants do. They may survive, but they will not thrive. For example, tomatoes will not set blossoms in above about 90 degrees, and you'll have what's called blossom drop where you'll just see little tomato flowers falling off and they never produce fruit because it's just too hot for them to do so. And you don't have to be in a desert environment to benefit from a shade cloth. Anywhere that you get very, very hot summer temperatures, a shade cloth can be beneficial, even if it's something as small as 20 or 30%. Here in this desert, because of certain climactic factors and environmental factors, the UV rays tend to be a little bit more brutal. <laughs> than other places. And along with the intense heat here, it's very dry and arid. So that heat beating down on the leaves coupled with how dry it is just makes water loss incredibly fast here in the summertime. So what a shade cloth does is it filters the sunlight that the plants receive while still providing some sun UV rays to get through as well as air and water. And the percentage that the light is filtered depends on the percentage of shade cloth you get. Now for most plant varieties, a shade cloth percentage recommendation is usually between 30 and 40. And for my entire shade structure, I purchased 40% shade cloth, which is one of my favorite plants to grow is tomatoes along with peppers. But that's a good recommended percentage for tomatoes. You can go higher. There are some plants that like a more shaded 
area and there are many people who use shade cloths not just for growing tomatoes and peppers but also for growing shady crops i mean sh shade cloths can go i don't know up to 70 80 90 percent where you're filtering out almost all of the sunlight but you also don't want to go too dark you want to err on the side of caution so that the plants that you are growing get the amount of light that they need to actually grow properly now with my shade cloth it's actually substantially cooler under here than it is in the direct sun that will change as the summer comes along and it starts getting to 100 105 degrees i mean at, at at 100, 105 degrees outside, the ambient air under here is, is just hot anyways. <laughs> it's just, it's hot. But it does make a significant difference in the growth of my plants when I have this on here. Shade cloths are also great for season extension of certain plants. Here I have various potatoes growing, which are actually a cooler weather crop. Um, but I am growing them in the spring here and they will be continuing to grow in the summer as temperatures climb above 100 degrees. It's currently going to be 96 tomorrow and this is not something that potatoes like to have, 96 degree weather. But having a shade cloth over here will keep them cooler and allow me to grow a plant that normally wouldn't grow very well in normal conditions under my normal sky. You can get shade cloths for free. Um, this was obviously a pretty hefty bill to construct this, but it was one of the most important things to be able to grow this large garden that I have. And so I made that investment on purpose, knowing that it was going to greatly extend the life of the plants in there and benefit the entire garden. And you'll have to choose your garden amendments, which I consider that a garden amendment, accordingly. There are gonna be some things that you have to spend money on, and this was a huge project that I really needed here in the Southwest. But this is an old shade cloth that I used that I actually still use for the chickens. And I don't know what percentage it is, but it was free because it had blown off of a local greenhouse that has them over like a local grow center that has shade cloths over all of their greenhouses. And so we picked that up for free and that's what we used before we were able to Put, a, put together this giant structure and, and have all the money to do that. So it doesn't have to be fancy. <laughs> it can absolutely be free, take a look around, and it doesn't have to be an actual shade cloth either. As long as something sufficiently filters the light, you can use it as a shade cloth. There are a lot of frost fabrics or like nettings that people use to keep bugs off their plants in the spring or frost fabric to keep frost off during the winter. You can use that as a shade cloth. Even this fencing that I have around my garden, if I were to fold this in half just so it was essentially thicker and filtered more, this could be used as a modified shade cloth. And it's really just all about filtering the light so that the plants aren't getting that full brunt of the sun. Now, as I stated before, this does not extend through my whole garden. And my garden will expand all the way up to my driveway eventually. And I am not going to continue building a shade cloth structure all the way out this way. So for those beds that aren't covered by the shade cloth, I planted them accordingly with plants that will do better with the full summer sun that we have here. So these onions were planted, uh, I don't know, the beginning of the year, January, February, something like that. And these onions will be done probably in the next two months and then they will come out. And this bed over here is full of squash and pepper plants, which do not mind the summer sun as much as my delicate tomatoes and chamomile. But nonetheless, when the sun sets in the west, they eventually receive shade as the evening progresses. And I took that into account when building this structure so that none of these plants wouldn't ever have a little bit of shade and now, these beds and these in-ground beds will receive shade as the sun sets during the technically hottest part of the day. Now, I won't say that all plants need shade cloth. I have certainly grown several plants without any shade cloth, especially when I was just getting my garden started. But depending on where you live um, and where I live is very hot and dry, I can certainly say that most plants will benefit from at least a little bit of shade during the hottest part of the afternoon. 
Now one big consideration you want for shade cloths or any sort of shade structure you're building is that you want it far enough away from the plant that there's circulation underneath. It, especially for these black shade cloths, though they do offer in different colors, they also offer this um, type called a luminette, where it's essentially, it looks like aluminum foil, like it's the silver colored and it's supposed to reflect the sun's rays and reflect heat back away. I never tried it. I don't know anything about it and it's more pricey than this just plain old black shade cloth. Um, but especially for these black shade cloths, they can tend to absorb a little bit of heat. <laughs> and so you do not want any sort of shade that you're providing right over your plants, like touching your plants or even within that first foot above the plant because it's just going to hold that heat in. So here, it's these are very high. I don't know how tall this is. Probably eight feet or so. This is probably about eight or nine feet tall. So there's plenty of room for air circulation, um, plenty of room for the brutal winds we get to come busting through here. <laughs> but now I don't put up my shade cloth in the early spring. The temperatures just aren't hot enough. And I really don't put my shade cloth up until it gets over 90. We are scheduled to get our first above 90 degree day this week, which is just jump straight to 96. Thanks, desert. <laughs> but because this does offer some UV filtration and lowers the amount of rays that the plants get from the sun, you don't want to be putting the shade cloth up willy-nilly because you can stunt your plant growth. You really only want it if it's going to be hot and very intense light. So I usually wait until the end of April, beginning of May, when the temperatures are climbing and especially for my tomatoes above 90 degrees they're going to start dropping blossoms and then i won't get any fruit if i don't have any blossoms <laughs> so this weekend chase and i decided to put this up and basically start our gardening season in earnest so oh see there's some baling twine <laughs> this isn't like perfectly put up we do take it down every season but i ordered my shade cloth with grommets every two feet and we just take paracord or rope or essentially anything we have and tie it onto the structure in a weaving kind of pattern. We first did this last year and I was a little worried about the wind and how stable it was gonna be, but it worked out perfectly fine. So we did the exact same thing this year. We can't permanently affix this shade cloth uh, because I don't want this shade cloth on all the time. I don't want it on in the late fall, during the winter because the temperatures aren't hot and I will be impeding the growth of my plants, especially in the winter when there are less daylight hours to begin with, so it takes longer for plants to grow. So using these cheap but effective nylon ropes or paracord that we can just cut off and untwist real quick and pull the shade cloth down, that's the way we like to do it. But look at these chive blossoms real quick. They're so pretty. Now I purchased my shade cloth from growersolutions.com. I'm not affiliated with them. Um, when I was doing my search, it was the cheapest place that I found. They do do custom sizes and they have tons of different colors and versions, white, black, colored, if you like colored shade sales, and they have the Illuminate version as well. The grommets on there are optional and I think they charge by the foot or square foot, something like that. And I did order it specifically for the length and width of the shade structure. Although, as you can see, I made a little mistake and missed about five feet here, which will have to be dealt with at a later date. I am not going to buy any shade cloth this year. And with the tracking of the sun currently, as it's a little bit more northward, I'm still getting shade cover here for my potatoes that I have in this row. I'm not too worried about it. When I harvest the potatoes, I'll just make sure to plant something in that last in-ground row that can take the full brunt of the sun, like okra or something. But like I said, if you are in need of shade for your garden, you can do this cheaply. You can do it free. But this was an investment I made in my garden that is pretty necessary where I live to have. And I needed it on a grand scale because I have a large garden. But it is so nice under here. <laughs> Working in the garden in the summertime is so much more pleasant with this over the garden. 
So this is where I've been the past few days and I apologize for all of you regular followers of mine. I have not been posting as much. Work has been kicking my butt. I am so busy right now, which is not the usual case. But I'm hoping it'll slow down soon and I can get out here and give you more frequent videos. We do have garlic to harvest pretty soon. Let's see if I can find you guys escape. There's one. So I've been waiting for this to happen. This is a garlic scape. This is the flowering bulb of the garlic that it will send up. And once all of my hardneck garlics have formed their scapes and I've harvested those, they send their energy down to the bulbs. Two weeks about after scape harvest, you get to harvest all the garlic. So that will be a fun video. I'm very excited. I've, these are some varieties I've not grown before. And honestly, nothing much has changed. The tomatoes are getting pretty big and my potatoes are still not growing like before. I am not going to have the best potato harvest this year. I had very spotty germination on all of my potato plants. We will get some, which is, which is good, it's better than none, but I just have large gaps missing where none came up. Though disappointing, can't control nature, and most likely I won't ever find out what happened, so. C'est la vie. If you guys have any questions about shade cloths, please ask me down below in the comments. I, I don't know if I covered everything. I tend to do my videos on the fly. I don't script them out. <laughs> so I'm sure I missed something, um, but please let me know. And I will catch you on the next one.